Now, on air and online, news as it used to be. This is Newsnet Evening Edition. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kirk Montgomery. The calendar may still say spring, but summer weather has arrived across much of the United States. Crank up the AC. Millions are bracing for extreme heat. A massive heat dome is settling in across much of the country from the southwest all the way to the mid-Atlantic. Many places will be flirting with, if not exceeding, triple digit heat. And for some, high humidity will make it feel even hotter. The heat's arriving this weekend and will last until the middle of next week. But it's not only the heat we're watching, there's also the threat of severe weather and more heavy rain in the south. Now for tonight, temperatures are on the cooler side. Senior meteorologist Barack Shapiro keeping a close eye on conditions as they develop. Hi, Barack. Hey, Kurt, good evening. Let's start you off with your Sunday morning temperatures. Very nice for Seattle and Portland with mid 40s. Also pretty nice for the Great Lakes Midwest and Northeast with 50s and 60s with 55 in Boston. Now, as we look ahead to next week, we've got a dome of high pressure setting up. It is going to bring incredibly hot temperatures with the potential for record heat, and it is going to last through a good chunk of the week. So over the next hour, we'll talk about just how hot it's going to be. Kirk, back to you. All right, Barack, thank you. As this extreme heat ramps up, health officials are reminding people just how deadly extreme heat can be. Health officials say you are more likely to die from heat than any other form of severe weather. According to the CDC, extreme heat kills more than twice as many people each year on average compared to hurricanes and tornadoes combined. The CDC is issuing a reminder about heat stroke. Some of the first signs include exhaustion, nausea, dizziness, headache, heavy sweating, and cool, clammy skin. The next level is slurred speech and loss of consciousness. Some may even have seizures. Now, to avoid a heat stroke, try to stay cool. Wear lightweight, loose-fitting clothing, and most importantly, stay hydrated. Overseas now, Israel reeling after the deadliest attack on Israeli forces in recent months. Israeli officials say eight soldiers were killed in an explosion in southern Gaza today. This comes as talks on a potential ceasefire continues to stall. Global leaders are endorsing the deal that would release hostages and end the fighting in Gaza, but U.S. leaders say Israel and Hamas still remain far apart on certain issues. It's still unclear what impact today's events may have on those truce talks. According to Palestinian health officials, nearly 40,000 Palestinians have died in the war and more than 2 million people have been forced from their homes. To Ukraine now, a plan towards ending the war in Ukraine could be on the horizon. Today, Switzerland is hosting world leaders from more than 100 countries who say they are dedicated to mapping out a way for peace in Ukraine. Noticeably absent, however, will be representatives from Russia and China. Still, Ukrainian President Zelensky says he hopes for a historic outcome of this meeting. Zelensky has been leading a diplomatic push to bring leaders together to support a 10-point peace formula he put together in 2022 to end the war. Vice President Kamala Harris is attending and is expected to deliver an address during the two-day meeting. And also in Ukraine, consumer drones, much like the ones you may have at home, are completely changing the front lines. But could something so simple be Ukraine's secret weapon against Russia's powerful arsenal? Newsnet International correspondent Ryan Thompson files this report. In Ukraine's fight against Russia, it's about doing more with less. High in the sky, drones have been deployed on an unprecedented scale. Not just tracking enemy troops, but also targeting them without risking Ukrainian lives. Consumer drones like this have completely transformed the battlefield, and it all boils down to cost. For as little as $500 or $1,000, soldiers can load these up with explosives, send them across the front lines, ultimately destroying Russian tanks like this worth millions of dollars. Ukraine says it's aiming to produce over one million drones this year, prompting a bustling startup sector of its defense economy focused exclusively on aerial warfare. A drone is effective because it's flexible. 
You can stop or change your mind at any time while using it. Maybe decide not to target a tank and hit the nearest trench soldiers instead. When you use missile weaponry, you have to have a very clear understanding and purpose in mind. You are attaching to smaller drones. Andrei Stepa has seen his hobby drone business become a major military contractor overnight. In addition to repurposing consumer models that anyone can buy, it also produces FPVs that carry grenades and other munitions, which are designed to be destroyed after launch. Nearly all units deployed to the front have them on hand. Everyone, even a regular sergeant or officer, is somehow involved with the system and forced to study it. It's become a standard equipment package for any military personnel, just like a bayonet, pistol, or bulletproof vest. Despite a much larger and more powerful arsenal, Russia has been quick to adapt similar tactics, which is why Andrei's company is now focusing on jamming signals to stop Russian drones before they get too close. If this is a regular mission. They start from his log antennas. It's a block of antenna. Uh, they go into the uh, spectral analyzers. And when drones do fall on the battlefield, they are recovered and sent to the drone hospital. Equipment is all too precious in this war, and nothing is ever wasted. Broken or damaged or shot down. Sometimes it's a trophy drone found by our guys. They pass them on to us. We remake them in a way that they can work here on our territory. Everything can be fixed and back in shape to provide assistance to our men. With no end in sight to the war, the drone repair shop is a nonstop operation. But even these guys know it's nothing compared to Moscow's military muscle. In Kyiv, Ukraine, I'm Ryan Thompson for Newsnet. In Oregon, thrill seekers got more than they expected when they got stuck dangling upside down on an amusement park ride. Take a look. Terrifying scene, emergency crews rescuing 28 people from this ride. After swinging in the air, park staff say the ride just stopped for about 30 minutes before maintenance workers manually lowered the ride to the ground. One rider with a pre-existing medical condition was sent to the hospital as a precaution and emergency responders checked out all of the other riders, but no injuries have been reported. And we are learning new details about the investigation into that ill-fated Titan implosion. The United States Coast Guard says it will take longer than expected for a report to be released. Nearly one year ago, on June 19th, five people died when the Titan imploded while en route to the wreckage of the Titanic. The Coast Guard says the delay of the investigation is because they're working to complete salvage missions to find evidence and test it. They are continuing to work with domestic and international partners to understand what exactly happened. <coughs> with less than two weeks to go before they meet in Atlanta for a televised debate, both President Biden and former President Trump are on the campaign trail this weekend. After flying overnight from the G7 summit in Italy, President Biden is in Hollywood for tonight's fundraiser featuring former President Barack Obama, actors George Clooney, Julia Roberts, and late night host Jimmy Kimmel. The Biden campaign says the event at the Peacock Theater has raised $28 million. That's a new record for Democrats. Meantime, Donald Trump will be in the battleground state of Michigan today for back-to-back -back appearances in Detroit at an African-American church, followed by a keynote address at a conference run by the conservative nonprofit Turning Point Action. For the very first time since being diagnosed with cancer, Princess Kate appearing in public. The Princess of Wales says she is making progress in her treatments and made an appearance at a military ceremony alongside her family in London. Members of the royal family alongside King Charles are uniting for the annual Trooping of the Colors ceremony. Newsnet correspondent Ellie Barrett is in London with more on the ceremony and what is ahead for the Princess of Wales. Trooping the Colour is the official celebration of the King's birthday. It's not his actual birthday until November. This year he inspected the troops in a carriage. That's a change from last year when he inspected the troops on horseback and that's because of his ongoing 
cancer treatment. For Princess Catherine, the first time the British public and tourists here in London have seen her on a public visit this year. She says that she is making progress in her treatment for cancer, but is not out of the woods yet. We're also told by the palace that this doesn't mark her full return to public duties, but we will see her when she's able to get out and about in the months ahead. The crowds gathered here at Buckingham Palace to see a military fly past, but also to see Princess Catherine, the King and other senior members of the royal family on the balcony at Buckingham Palace behind me. Ollie Barrett in London for Newsnet. This week's travel report transports guests to a night of luxury and a Disney theme park is giving a sneak peek of one of their new attractions. Newsnet's Madison Schlegel with a closer look. This week's travel report is brought to you by Travelhost.com and we're kicking it off in the mountains of Colorado. Mill Mountain is home to one of the most extraordinary Airbnbs. This is the forest retreat nestled into the mountains and covered by snowy hills. But the second you step inside, guests know why this spot is topping lists. A new study by Wealth of Geeks calculates the most luxurious and expensive places to stay. And this year, topping the list, the Forest Retreat earns the spot as the most expensive Airbnb in the country. During peak summer travel, which is around May to August, it costs over $22,000 a night to stay at the house. It has six bedrooms, seven and a half bathrooms, and all the amenities you can imagine. From Colorado heading east to Florida, we've been following Disney's latest facelift. Splash Mountain was announced to turn into Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And now, Disney is ready to tell the world when the new ride will be ready. Starting June 28th of this year, guests can transport themselves back to the 1940s in New Orleans. Disney now giving people a sneak peek at what the ride will look like. But for people who would rather watch the ride than be on it, this new lookout in Charlotte is the place to visit. But this lookout has a twist. It's meant to help spot planes. The Charlotte Douglas Airport built a brand new lookout for all of the people who come to the area to plane spot. It's called the Airport Overlook. It sprawls across 600,000 square feet and has a playground for kids and old fighter jets on display. The Overlook is only two miles from the airport. The park itself has food trucks that park up in front of it and admission to the park is free. One festival in Spain is tastier and maybe messier than the rest. Every year outside of Valencia, the locals host a tradition honored to one star vegetable, the tomato. La Tomatina is the name of the festival and people come from all over the world since 1945 to get in on this messy tradition. There's a parade, food and most famously a giant tomato food fight. People fill the streets throwing tomatoes, and the tradition has gotten so big they now limit the crowd to about 20,000 people. If you want to get in on this messy Spanish tradition, it's not too late. Their annual tomato toss happens on Wednesday, August 28th. That's this week's travel report, all thanks to TravelHost.com. For Newsnet, I'm Madison Schlegel. Still ahead, the Newsnet weather team is tracking your forecast. We have sports highlights and entertainment headlines. I'm Kirk Montgomery. Thank you for watching Newsnet. We're back in 60 seconds.